Hey everybody, Thaisha here with Legacy of Light in conjunction with Wellnove Wellness Center here in Menasha, Wisconsin. Coming to you for one of my 365 days from my heart to yours. And we are doing a series, um, just chapters from If the Buddha Dated, a handbook for finding love on the spiritual path, conscious relationships, some pretty awesome stuff. So we're doing chapter six today and it is Accept the dance of oneness and separateness. Imagine an infant, some two months old, cradled in his mother's arms, nursing, adrift in the oceanic, timeless, boundless world of infancy. His being and that of his caretaking human partner are merged. And that is Maggie Scarf from the Intimate Partners. Intimacy requires an ability to both merge and to be separate, to come together and to be apart. Like oscillating on a giant swing from oneness to separateness, creating a constant rhythm, and for many, feelings of anxiety. We sometimes feel anxious because falling in love and starting a new relationship resurrects any buried feelings about original attachment to our mother or our primary caregiver. We were once completely merged with our mother and often unconsciously, we still desire to find that feeling of union. We want someone to completely enfold us and take care of us. As children, we needed to be held and protected so we wouldn't feel cast into the abyss. At the same time, we needed to be free to leave our mother's arms and to explore the fascinating world around us. This required a mother who could hold us close one minute and release us the next. If our parents had unresolved problems with oneness or separateness, they may have been indifferent when they held us or uncomfortable when we wanted to be separate, explore interests, or have friends of our own. Our, par our parents may have written scripts for us or seen us as a reflection of their own words, rather than a separate people. From her earliest memory, Margie remembered her mother encouraging her to be a doctor. She gave her doctor toys, books on doctors, and endlessly talked about her daughter's doctor future. It was as if she wanted to be able to say, my daughter, the doctor. I don't think she ever asked me what I wanted. She also talked about what I ate nearly every day and constantly weighed me. You'd think I was her body. She was incredibly concerned with the status of boys I dated and spent a fortune on trying to dress me in very classy feminine clothes when I preferred blue jeans. She was obsessed with me, but never really interested in who I was. Marcy felt gripped by guilt whenever she explored activities she enjoyed and didn't meet with her mother's approval. And she felt incredibly disloyal when she dated a man from a lower middle class background. Her mother missed no opportunity to cut him down. Marcy's mother fits the classic picture of the narcissist. Someone who sees the world through her own eyes, writes scripts for others, and is unable to understand her impact on the people around her. Intrusive, or narcissistic parents give their children the covert message that forging a separate identity is crime punishable by abandonment. In other words, the parent instills the message, you hurt me if you disagree with me. You hurt me if you love someone else or won't be who I want you to be. This puts children in, double, in a double bind between their natural desire for their authentic self and their desire for their parents' approval. False beliefs come ingrained. I'm responsible for everyone's happiness. The truth hurts people. You are going to hurt me. Being myself is wrong. This makes both the spiritual path and the relationships very difficult because the tremendous fear of being authentic or bringing up conflict or even having an opinion until we become emotionally separate from intrusive or controlling parent and release the accomplishing guilt, which is really a cover for our rage and anger. We are likely to get into a distant or chaotic push and pull relationships. 
Whenever someone gets close to us, we tend to see them as a critical or intrusive parent and misinterpret their motivation and intent. To talk openly about fears and opinion feels like pulling fish hooks out of our throat instead of experiencing oneness and separateness. We often vacillate between compliance and defiance, being the good child or the bad child, the one who obeys or the one who rebels. Separating from a controlling parent can feel as if we're being disloyal or cruel. For some, it feels like giving up an addiction and the guilt, the symptom of withdrawal can be gut-wrenching. Releasing guilt requires that we connect with our underlying resentment and anger. This crime of breaking a symbiotic loyalty tie is a necessary one. However, because only through forging a separate identity and finding our authentic voice can we give birth to our own true self and to see others clearly. Marcy was determined to separate from her mother while moving 2,000 miles away to a college helped. Her mother's voice was still in her head and she felt guilty and didn't even call if she didn't call every few days. With intensive counseling, she slowly realized she wasn't responsible for her mother's well-being, that she had the right to love another. Two years later, she took a major step in separating from her mother by revealing she was in love with a woman. In the week before she mailed her coming out letter to her mom, she had a digestive problem and flashes of anxiety, but mailed the letter anyhow, much to her eventual relief. As the old beliefs became less tenuous, she became freer to deepen her bond with Elise. So a healthy relationship consists of two people devoted to each other, being true to their path, as well as being intimate with each other. We need to be willing to open the door for our beloved to spend time realizing his or her passions and their life goals. If we feel threatened when our partner feels enthusiasm for work or hobbies, it's our job to recognize jealousy, possessiveness as our problem. Hmm, I'm getting jealous, even rageful. What's fueling these feelings and what wounds are these stories protecting? So again, we have to get in touch with ourselves and our needs to you know, figure out why these feelings are coming up and where they're coming up because it is not the other person's job and it has nothing to do with the other person. It's just them reflecting something in us that needs to be looked at. So, if you are the one being pressured to limit yourself, or give up your dreams to placate your partner, it is important to withstand the pressure and continue your path calmly, kindly, and with compassion for your partner's predicament. So it doesn't say like, get angry, get upset, and be like, well, fuck you, I'm gonna do it, <laughs> whatever. It's having compassion because there is something that maybe they aren't even aware with. And sometimes we need to allow our partners, allow our friends, allow our family to, to go through whatever they are going through and to not say anything to them. And this is like a huge blessing. And um, a couple years ago, before I quit drinking, um, I was dating somebody who didn't drink and they showed me like how wonderful that gift is because they never complained about my drinking. They never were like, oh dude, like, you know, you had one too many last night or whatever. And they just allowed me to, to go through my process myself. And you know, the last night that I drank, I was, you know, hanging out with them, <laughs> but I came to the conclusion myself and, and they never, you know, 
said anything negative to me. Even though, you know, they didn't like to see me, you know, drinking or whatever, they allowed me to go through that process on my own because sometimes when we, you know, say things, it, it has the opposite effect. Even though we care and love for that person, we need to allow them to, to have their own process. We're all here having our own processes and, and going through our own stories and our own paths. So we need to allow that to just to come through. And, you know, there is also the thing that they, that person may never stop what they're doing. Anyways, whether you say something or not, or you allow them to go through the process, is it's our choice. And so it, that's another thing that we need to like come to grips with is, is just allowing people on their path. And, and, and maybe, you know, they may not get through a certain thing in this lifetime. And that's okay. But it's kind of like we don't want to step in and, and hinder anybody wherever they are on their path. Sure, if somebody comes to you and asks you, you know, you can be honest with them and, and love them and have compassion while you do that. Calmly, kindly, and with compassion. So you can let your partner know you're not withdrawing your love you are expanding your life. <laughs> your beloved may or may not hear you, but saying, but staying true to yourself is the only hope for spiritually connected relationship. And it's the only way to stay on your journey. In any relationship, you can notice your feelings when you come together and when you leave to be apart. In the tra is the transition smooth, free, open or is it sticky wrenching and fearful do you often say to longer than you are meant to or linger on the phone because it's pay painful to separate do you pressure your new love to be with you and feel empty when you're alone just notice and stay with that experience because that experience is telling you something and just listen to what it is telling you as we evolve on the spiritual path, we find a balance between being together, welcoming, present, and alive, and being separate because life is rich either way. And either way, when you realize that all these things that you enjoy in your partner, all the things that rub you the wrong way or trigger you all of those things are inside of you as well so this you know fear from being separated is just trying to tell you to look within there's something out of balance it's not wrong it's not right it's just out of balance and that is what that is showing you so our emotional experience of making transitions between oneness and separateness parallels the ambivalence most people feel on the path of spiritual development. We want inner peace, but we're scared to surrender to our rigid ego or interrupt our busy schedule to experience stillness or the agitation that comes when we attempt to be still. And something that I do, and I was just telling my friend the other day, because a lot of times people are like, oh, I can't meditate, you know, and then you give up and then you get agitated because your, your mind is going, you know, like, oh, I got to do this, this, or then other things come to you. But sometimes some of those things are coming up for you to look at them. But another thing that I do is sometimes when I feel like I'm getting into that chatter mode is I just tell my ego, I said, look, Here's a microphone. There is this auditorium of like, you know, thousands of people who want to listen to you. So take the microphone, talk to them all you want. I will be back later. And then it works. <laughs> I 
I, I leave my ego to, 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 you know, find my stillness and, and find that place where I'm not, like, having that little chatter in my head. And it, you know, gives your ego something to do. And it's kind of like, you know, when the Buddhists talk about following your breath, like, I breathe in, I breathe out. I breathe in, I breathe out. And they talk about it as like giving your monkey mind something to do. Because then you're not focusing on that. You're just, oh, I'm focusing on the breath. Then the mind's focusing on the breath. And then your mind's focusing on the breath. And then you can just let go. So we want a partner, but we shy away from pain or discomfort or the possibility of loss. We want intimacy, but we don't want to give up doing the things our way or to let go of our longing to have someone take care of us. The fears come from the stories that conceal our wounds. So it might help to remember that at an energy level, win or lose, it's all the same. Our tears of joy, our tears of pain are both one energy. The flow of who we are. We can either bargain, hold back, or hang on to comfort and security, or we can take a deep breath and say, take me, and leap into the fire. And as I've said before, it is our choice, and all of those choices that you make aren't right, and they're not wrong. They're just the choices that you're making with all of the information that you have. And the universe loves you and adores you either way. It doesn't matter. So we get to choose. Are we going to bargain? Are we going to hold back? Are we going to hang on to this, this notion of comfort and security that we have built up to think that we need these certain things to, to be comfortable, to be secure? Or are we going to take that deep breath and say, take me. I have faith and I have trust in the universe and having faith and trust in the universe is having faith and trust in yourself and knowing that if you're listening to your heart you will be guided to the things that your heart desires and and in every moment I don't think we ever come to a place that we're just like, oh, I got it all now. <laughs> Even though, you know, those of you who've been watching these know that that, I would enjoy that. <laughs> you know, like, oh, whoo, I'm done. It's cool. I got it all now. <laughs> But that's the beauty of this is like the the enjoyment of finding this path and making these choices. And then, you know, like if you make a choice and, you know, a couple months later, you're like, I don't know why I made that choice. And I don't really, you know, agree with it anymore because it's like that doesn't serve you anymore. Or you just became aware of that like, mm, that's really not a choice I want to make anymore. Then you get to make a new one and move from that. And a lot of times we just, we have this fear and anxiety of the unknown, but every time we make the choices of this faith and trust in our heart, it's amazing. And it, I can't, I, <laughs> that's all I can say is it is amazing when you step out of these fear choices and you step into love choices. You step into these truth choices. You step into your heart choices. And it becomes a flow. And you can let go. And just, you know, take that leap and say, look, life, universe, my team, this is where I want to go. These are the things I desire. If it's for my highest good. You know, give me some signs. Give me some signals. Give me a thumbs up, you know. <laughs> Help me out here. I mean, 
Sometimes it just takes asking and then the listening and, and the quiet stillness. And just remember, you get to choose. At every moment, it is your choice. No matter what. So all of the things, the joy, the love, the pain, the suffering, that's our choice. And we need to take responsibility for everything. Because we are the creators. We are the universe. We are God. We're all here as part of the divine creating our reality through our divine expression of who we are right now. And who you are right now, the universe loves. And who you were right then, the universe loves. And who you will be, the universe loves. Because it just loves you. And it adores you for everything that you are. So... Remember that.